Welcome and hello everyone to the Starlight Gaming Channel. I'm bringing you guys my first ever plug-in tutorial video. I know that we do a full dev stream on behind the casts and behind the scenes, um, but I would like to make a video just kind of going over everything that we do and how we do it. Um, so that way if you wanted to run your own server of your own and you wanted to create and use some of these plugins, you more than certainly could. So I hope this video is some help to you. Uh, we will be filming today's video on Terminus. Uh, it is a custom uh, free to play survival game and we hope you guys, uh, if you get a chance, come along and play with us at play.terminusmc.com. Now without a further ado, let's begin. Okay. So, starting off, uh, NPCs can just about do everything. They're useful from uh, setting up a lobby for your server, uh, to giving lore, to speaking to people, to giving them items, quests, so much more. I mean, you could literally just about do everything with an NPC, just like this little guide bee here, who's just showing you around the main lobby, who talks to you and gives you some information as you go around and follow him. Um, now, any kind of plug-in tutorial on storyline like quests for NPCs more of an advanced tutorial will be made later on so if you are directly looking for how to set up quests for your NPCs um, make sure to check back at the channel uh, because we will be releasing a video soon for that so thank you again um, so anyway starting off I would just like to say you can name your NPC, NPC just about anything you want. You can make it any type of animal, any type of thing inside the game. You could give it any name or any skin. The plugin Citizens does come with its own set of skins, but I will also be showing you today how to put your own custom skins on your NPCs. Uh, it will be a full Citizens tutorial breakdown. Uh, okay, so let's just go ahead and start this out by creating our first little NPC. Uh, we'll start off by doing NPC Create. Um, make sure you do space create too. Now, whenever you do tab, it'll pull up a whole bunch of listing options for things that you could give your NPCs. You could give them traits just like villagers, so that way whenever you click on the NPC, it would have a trait just like a normal villager would. Or you could give it a trait like a zombie, so it'll follow people around and, and attack them. Um, but for this instance, let me just create a bee, just like my little guide bee. And using some color codes, uh, you know, you could easily do this just by Googling it um, and figuring out, you know, it, sh it is very simple uh, list of color commands. Um, so I'll just go ahead and give it a simple yellow color with that E and E, and I'll make it bold and italics. All right, and I'll make him my little test guy. And I'm going to go ahead and create my little test B here. Awesome. So now, so far, the NPC will not do anything. He's just going to sit here and hang out until you instruct him to do so. So if we want to give some commands for our NPCs, depending on what we want, um, we could do different things. So if we want our NPC to feel more alive, let's just go ahead and have him look at us whenever we walk around. So we'll do slash NPC look. Now anytime I walk around, that NPC will try to look at me. Now bees are not as good at this as you know typical NPCs, like let me create just a normal NPC for the purpose of this test. So. Just like this, this person's not going to look at me. They're going to stand here and be a dry bone person. But as soon as I give them a little bit of life by doing slash NPC look, they follow me around. This is exactly what you want. So anytime you have uh, a situation in which you want a more realistic player, that's how we'll achieve it. You could also, for example, if you're trying to use the NPC for a lobby uh, and you want him to kind of stick out a little bit, you can make him glow just by doing slash NPC glow. This will make him stick out by giving him a wall, a kind of like a wall hack, by hitting him with those special arrows. Um, this is really useful if you want to draw the player's eyes towards a particular NPC. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and turn this off just for the purpose of that test. Now we'll go ahead and get into making our NPC do something. So CMD, in other words, is short for command. NPC command. Or we could do CMD. Now... We do want to make sure, for example, like if we're setting up our lobby, we do want to make sure that our NPC can connect to places. So, you know, like if I want him to connect to another world, if I want him to connect to my PvP arena in another world, this is exactly how I'd go about doing that. So we'll just do NPC CMD, which, which just means command, add, space, P, and then whatever command you'd like him to run. For example, I'll put him, since he's a test, just to run the shop command. You don't have to put slash shop in front of it or anything like that, it'll automatically know how to run the command when you run it. So as soon as I put that command in, boom, it ran my slash shop. So donor shop, 
and then everything else inside that shop. So this could do anything too. It could also work for warps. It'll work for multiverse teleports. This will work for economies. Uh, and this will work as well for, for quests later on uh, down the road whenever we get into that advanced tutorial. Now let's say that we set it to something that later down the road we want to change. Let's just say I don't want this NPC to have shop anymore. I want him to, I don't know, have access to auction or something. So given right here, it said command shop added with ID 0. Every time you add a command to your NPC, it'll go up by 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So anytime you want to remove that exact command, let's say if it's shop and that's set to 0, I just do remove 0. This shall remove the command for my NPC. Now when I click my NPC, he no longer does anything. So we'll go ahead and change that command to something new. All right, we'll go ahead and make it auction just for the player house. Sweet, sweet. So now you fully understand how to run commands for your NPCs. This is really useful if you want to set up a lobby. Uh, for example, if you want to get a player to a warp, um, you know, like any one of these warps, you would just do CMD command and then warp set the name warp. Um, this is very useful, like I said. So we'll continue and we'll move on. Let's say you want to use your NPC for something a little bit different than the lobby. Let's say I just want an NPC that walks around and talks to people. Maybe shows them how to do a couple things. Um, you know, so we'll go ahead and start off with having this NPC walk around and follow a direct path. Once you do slash NPC path, a guide menu will pull up on the side just like this. It will ask you to left click or right click. Right clicking removes any of the paths that you set and left clicking uh, enables them to be set. So if I click right here, my NPC will now head there, head here, and head here. So now let me do NPC path. This will exit me out of that path editor and now my NPC is just walking back and forth. Now for example, over here for, for example, I have an NPC that just guides players down from the tutorial area. As soon as he reaches his designation, he goes immediately back up to the top of the mountain. He doesn't loop, just like this person's doing where he's going back and forth. Now, if you want to make it so that way your NPC only follows one path and then resets, we could also go back into the path menu and just type cycle. This will allow my NPC to just go back from his original starting point instead of, um, ending up exactly wherever I set him to be. So let me go ahead and clear these paths. Let's just say these paths aren't working out for me. Okay, cool, now that we've set it to zero, we'll exit out of our path editor. Um, okay, and we'll move on to NPC text. So let's say that you've got your NPC walking around and you've got him going to the direction that you want him to go. He's walking around your lobby. He's walking around your story mode. He's walking around your cool quests. Whatever it is that you want him to do, um, you know, now you want him to have a little bit of information alongside that. So you'll just type in NPC text, T-E-X-T -E text, and this will pull up another menu. Inside this menu, you can see all of the options for it in yellow. Everything else will be green, just explaining what it does. Um, and for example, let's say that I want my NPC to say, Hello, welcome to Terminus. And uh, this is a test. Okay, so after I click add, oh, oh I forgot to even do add. <laughs> So you have to do add first. You have to put add and then the text that you want to add. Make sure that you do that first. Uh, it'll add, see, just like that. Hello, welcome to Terminus. This is a text. Now, this text will not show up unless you right-click this NPC uh, to get that text from him. If you want your NPC to speak to a player whenever they get close or within a certain range of your NPC, you can definitely do this too, just by typing in close. Or close. Uh, so now anytime I get close to this NPC, uh, there is no range set. I believe the original stock range is around three or four. I'm not exactly sure, so please do not quote me on that. Um, but anytime you're close to the NPC, he will speak. So now, let me go ahead and set my range. I'll just go ahead and set my range to two. So anytime I get two blocks away from this person, he will speak to me. But let's say I don't want all this annoying text back to back to back. He just talks way too much. Okay, well... I could also set a delay on the text by, let's say, 160. So now I've delayed that text every 120 seconds. So anytime I go up to another NPC, for example, this guy would be here. 
following me around the hall for a preview of the first floor, buzz buzz. Um, he will do this every 200 and something seconds. I'm not exactly sure how long I set that NPC to do that. But exactly what I've just shown you to do with this NPC is exactly what that bee over there is doing. Um, so now you are fully capable of getting your NPC to walk around, go where he wants to go. You are fully capable of getting your NPC to talk and speak to players when they come in, as well as understanding how to set commands to your NPCs, uh, as well as maybe making them highlighted too if they're really important and you really want to point that out. Let's move on to something a little bit more interesting. So when wanting to change your skins, and there is a full menu of skins to choose from and to pick from, um, you could find yourself at this website called Skindex. This is a website I personally use, and I think it is phenomenal for finding the perfect skin for your server, no matter what kind of server it is. They have medieval skins, they have superhero skins, they have, you know, I mean, literally just everything you could think of. So just look up Minecraft the Skindex, and it'll pull up a full website listed uh, with all different kinds of NPCs. And I'll just click one of these first NPCs that I see. I'm not going to be really picky with this. And as soon as I click an NPC skin that I like, it'll pull up um, that character that I've just clicked on. For example, my, my test skin that I'm choosing. His name is George on the website. He's on the first page. On the right hand side of this, you will see something called embedded codes. Form, HTML, and image link. Make sure you click the thing that says image link. This will pull up a link for that image that you can now translate back into the game anytime that you want to pull a skin off of online or create your own uh, you just do skin url space and then paste that exact url into the bar now this should take a minute to kick in because it's pulling from an online cloud so as soon as it does you'll see it though now sometimes this can act a little bit glitchy as the citizens plugin is not perfect um, but it is really amazing really 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 amazing um, I mean you could do just about anything you want with this plugin uh, and see just like that we got ourselves George the test guy George the test guy all right George I appreciate your help so much okay now if I want to I could make my NPC collidable I could make him controllable I could make him writable um, and I can do all kinds of other stuff I can make him flyable fallable and I could also, you know, for example, like, like if you want, you know, like you're telling your story in a quest line and you want your NPC to follow a certain person after they get to that point, you could just do NPC follow person, whoever is the closest near, or you could set it directly, you know, let's just say Nova Cookie, here's one of our members online, go follow that person. So now my NPC teleported away from me, he is gone, he is now following around Nova. And I will get rid of him later on and just continue with this NPC. So when selecting different NPCs after you create one that you've created, let's say that you've created more than one just like there is inside, you could not just continue to run NPC commands or it will only work on the last NPC that you've been playing with. So for example, if I change anything else, it will go to that NPC that just left me not this one in front of me. So in order to get this NPC selected, I just do NPC select, and it will select my test ID, just like this. So now I can be able to give him any commands, make him walk around, make him do stuff, set skins to them. Um, I could change his type. Uh, I could rename him just by doing NPC rename, and then, you know, let me give him a cool purple color. Uh, and we'll do the same thing here. Test. Sweet. So just by giving him a new color, he looks even fancier. So you could edit anything with your NPCs within range. A list of full commands does come up whenever you type in tab. Um, you know, you have everything from a boss bar. So if I set the boss bar, I could set it to be visible. Um, I could set the title for the boss bar, color, for example, blue. Um, and then I set the flags, let's just say boss. And then title B. I listed too many arguments. Ah, well. Either way, you could set boss, bar, boss bars for your NPC that will show up and give them a cool looking look. Um, and I'll try to figure that out in a minute here. I'm not going to really worry about it too hard. Uh, but you could also make your NPCs flyable. For example, like this. Test is no longer flyable, but I could also make him flyable. Uh, I could also make him writable. So, just by 
just by scrolling down here, you could find it. Anything inside of here, I could set the holograms. I could also rewrite his ID. So let's say if I'm setting him into a story mode and I want a specific ID, the ID just represents the NPC's number, uh, starting at one with the first NPC that you create. We have up to 70, so you know his ID will be closer to 70. Uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've set follow. You could set the game mode for your NPCs. You could set the gravity for your NPC to show, you know, for example, like if he's a bee and you don't want him to hover, but you want him to be on the ground, you could do that as well. I could set an item to my NPC. I could set him to be leashable. So anytime um, I want to put a leash on my NPC, I could now do this just by pulling out a lead and putting it in my hand. This will allow me to move around and control my NPC wherever I want. And I could also set him to be mountable. Now, this NPC is not controllable. Let's say if I created a horse or some kind of NPC that I was capable of riding, then it would allow me. Um, and then let me go ahead and clean up this other NPC who's just ever so annoyingly following my friend around anytime that you don't want your npc there anymore you could just simply get rid of him by doing npc remove and bada bink bada boom he is gone goodbye test and then i also have another test b right here um so with other npc commands besides setting skins um besides setting the commands besides setting text and besides setting uh you know the walkway and some other cool kind of features like setting a boss bar for your npc if you want uh boss guys for your quest line or storyline and like i said some of that more advanced stuff i will be covering in another video as uh it, it is a lot of information and how to get it working properly um can be quite a bit too so i hope you guys check out that video um you guys could also do um, a whole bunch of other stuff with your NPC. For example, you could make him a panda, an ocelot, an owner. You could make him passive. You could give him health. Uh, you could give a range to set for your NPC. Um, and like I said, just by setting the type, we'll set the behavior too. Or not the type, the trait. So if you want your NPC to act like a zombie, if I wanted my B here to attack other people like a zombie would, then I would simply just give him the trait of a uh, zombie. Uh, so that pretty much covers all of it. I'm sorry it is a little bit long for what it is. Uh, I hope this video covered everything that you guys needed to know and more. Um, also, one more thing I'd like to cover too. So let's say that I wanted to bring an NPC over to me and just bring him to my area. I just simply do that by doing NPC TP here. And, ooh, well, I need to go grab him first. Let me go grab my NPC. NPC select. And then I will move him over here like this. So you could place him anywhere you want. Uh, and this is exactly what I did for my wild NPC. This is exactly what I did for my season NPC. And so on and so forth. So, um, you know, you could use your NPCs for just about everything from decoration at a table to being useful like this one where I could set him up to go to my donor world and I just click him and he transports me back to running in a story mon. So you could do just about anything you want with this plugin. I hope some of this information that I provided to you today was of some help. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free just to join the server and ask me personally. My name is Starline. I'm one of the owners here at Terminus. Um, and again, that IP is play.terminusmc.com 1.7 through 16.4. Um, and make sure to check out the future videos. Thank you so much.